So number one, we have two pentagons and the outer pentagon or the bigger pentagon is the image of the inner pentagon. And we are wanting to figure out what the scale factor is of this dilation. So when we do a scale factor, you want to compare corresponding parts from your original figure and your image. So I'm going to look at this segment AB and compare that to A prime B prime. And so when you do the scale, um, you want to make sure that you take your new length and divide it by the original. And then that's going to give you your scale factor. So in our case, um, the scale factor here is five thirds. Certainly could have compared other ones. So if you compared a the 10 with the six, remember you'd get 10 over six, both of those divide by two and you'd get five third for the scale factor as well. Number two, a polygon has a perimeter of 12 units and is dilated by a scale factor of three fourths. What's the perimeter of the image or the new shape? So remember perimeter is just side lengths. And so that's going to dilate at the same scale factor as the image. So if our perimeter is 12 and our scale factor is 3 fourths, we'll just multiply that. And 12 is 12 over 1. So 12 times 3 is 36 and 1 times 4 is 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So the perimeter of the new shape is 9. Number three, triangle ABC is taken to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime by a dilation. Which of the scale factors for the dilation would result in a larger original, um, in an image that was larger than the original? So remember, if your K value or your scale factor is less than one, then the new shape is smaller. If K is equal to one, then the new is the same size. And if your scale factor is larger than one, then your new shape is bigger than the original or larger than the original. So A is less than one, B is less than one, C is equal to one, so it's gonna stay the same size. So D is our fraction that is larger than one, giving us a bigger image. Number four, dilate the quadrilateral ABCD using D as the center and a scale factor of two. So when we're dilating here, we want to make sure that we leave the center point the same. So I'm going to highlight that center point. So D is going to stay in the same spot. Then the rest of the points are going to um, be two times further away from D than they originally are. Um, because our scale factor is two. So remember that they dilate on a line that goes from the um, point of dilation through the point that we're dilating. So I'm just gonna draw on these dilating lines here. So from our center of dilation and then kind of through those points. So this distance needs to double to dilate by a scale factor of two. And so when you have the grid, you can kind of see, so this new point, um, and actually let me get a new point here, okay? So this one is kind of like diagonally through two triangles. So this point is two times larger or two times further away. So here, okay, you kind of go up two triangles over one, up two triangles over one, this would be two times further. And here we're going along the kind of side of three triangles, one, two, three triangles to get to C. So one, two, three triangles would double that distance. <clears throat> and so then that would get us our dilated quadrilateral. So kind of measure the distance from the center of dilation, make sure you double it since the scale factor was two and that'll get you your dilated quadrilateral. So in this one, um, we're trying to dilate by a scale factor of three and this one doesn't have a grid, but we're gonna do kind of the same idea here. And so I'm gonna draw on the dilating lines. So remember they go from the center of dilation through each of the points that we're trying to dilate. 
So I'm going to go B to each of these points to help me dilate this shape. And so this time we want to go three times the length. So if you're doing this um, in your workbook, then you're kind of going to want to, you're going to want to get a ruler so that you can um, measure how long these, um, how far these points are away from the original. And you can do inches or you can do centimeters. Um, I tend to like centimeters better. So this point right here um, is... 3.2 centimeters from B. So now we're going to use a scale factor of three. So we're going to do 3.2 times three, and that's going to give us 9.6. So our new point is going to be 9.6 centimeters away from the original. And so then that will tell us where our new point is. And we're going to do this for each of these um, points here. So set zero at B, measure to this point here. We see this one is 3.6 centimeters away from B. So then we'll do 3.6 times three and we'll get 10.8. So then we need to go out to um, 10.8 here on our ruler. So 10.8 away along this dilating line. This is gonna give us the new point. And we would continue to do this um, for each of these points. So this one is 6.4 away. So we'll multiply that by 3 and get out to 19. So we need to be 19.2 for this one. And then, um, oh, and whoops, that wasn't all the way at 0, was it? Oh, yeah, it was. Okay, so then we'll rotate this one. Make sure it's at zero on the center. So this point is like 5.3. So 5.3 times three is 15.9. So we'd measure out to 15.9 to put our new point. And um, then you're gonna be able to see those new points for the dilation. So, whoops, let me get this to be a different color here. So then we can start connecting these. So this one, so this one to this one was a straight line. Here to here was a straight line as well. And then you've got a bit of a curve that would connect this. So you're just going to have to kind of sketch that to get this kind of curved part on there in your book. But that would be dilating it by a scale factor of three. <laughs> All right, then number six um, asks us, using this diagram, um, the value of x is six. So this part is six. We know that these are scale copies of each other. And then it wants us to know the scale factor. And we, in fact, didn't even need to know this was six in order to come up with our scale factor because we'll compare corresponding parts. So this piece and this piece. And remember, when you do the scale factor, you do the new um, length on top divided by the original length. And so our new length was 3 and our original length was 4. So our scale factor is 3 fourths. Number 7, prove that um, segment AD is congruent to segment BC. So ultimately, we want to prove that these two segments are congruent to each other. And so in order to do that, we can take a look at trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So this triangle here congruent to this triangle here. If those two triangles are congruent, then by corresponding parts, um, the two bl blue segments would be congruent. And so we see that they give us that AE and EC are congruent. We also know that these two lines are parallel, which then helps us with some, some alternate interior angles. So this angle here would be congruent to this angle here because those are alternate interior. And then this angle here is also congruent to this angle here by alternate interior. Um, so I'm just going to kind of write that out. So we have angle... 
um, EAD is congruent, so this one, so EAD is congruent to ECB, and angle ADE, so this top one, is congruent to CBE. Um, because they are con alternate interior angles. With parallel lines. So since they gave us these two lines are parallel, then we know alternate interior angles are congruent. And now what that does for us, so if I just kind of redraw this triangle here and mark it up, we see that we've got this side, this angle, and this angle congruent um, to this other one. So that gives us two angles and a non-included side. Um, so then we know the two triangles are congruent. So then triangle ADE, okay, ADE is congruent to triangle CBE by angle angle side. which tells us that um, AD is congruent to BC because they are, oops, because they are corresponding parts. Of those triangles that we just proved are congruent. So they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles.